say what's on your mind Speak loud from within Make us sing along With the power of the pen Say what's on your mind Speak loud from within Make us sing along Let's see how you feeling, bro. I'm good, man. Good, man. Yo, this is dope. This is so amazing. Y'all give some hearts for my brother, y'all. Yo, glad to see you, bro. Glad to it's see. You. Amazing. It's so good to see you again. I think I saw you like maybe a month ago yeah. at the church for the uh, convocation. Yeah, uh, for the gathering. For the, the gathering. gathering. Yeah, it was great. To and see that you. was amazing. Yeah, praise God, bro. God always meets us when we come to Love Fellowship. It's always. <laughs> It's Always. a family affair, right? Absolutely. It's a family affair. Absolutely. Definitely. How you doing tonight? Man, I'm great, man. Um, my wife just made me something good to eat. That's good. Hey! Today. Hey! We had taco today today. So I'm always good. Um, in a good season, man. God has been blessing us so all. I'm, I'm I good. know he has. I can't wait to talk about it, Jay. Yeah, man. I can't wait to talk about it. Yeah. Okay, so let's just let's just act like. Let's just act like somebody don't know who J.J. Hairston is, right? For for the people in the back that don't know who this brother is. <laughs> plenty of people who don't. Trust me. <laughs> who don't know? Yo, J.J., um, I've known you for I don't know how many years. I know uh, this much I know. I think when I first met you, we were all like in our 20s. <laughs> yes, yes. Yep. Somewhere around that somewhere around that time, somewhere right? Around, right. So, you know, and just to see, man, what God is doing, um, what he's done in your life uh, through your ministry, man, I can't wait to dig into this tonight, man, because people just need to know the story. They need to know the story behind the song, the artist, and, and, and what we do out here on the front line, right? Right. You know, they see us shining and smiling and excited on the, on the pulpit and on the stages, but they have no idea. Yeah. Why we sing the songs that we sing and what's behind the lyrics of what we write and things like that, right? Yeah. Um, you have been blessed to be a writer, a co-writer. Um, I thank God for your wisdom of even song selections because you even recorded songs that you didn't write, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Um, just tell the people a little bit about who you are. Um, and let's, let's just start here. How you got started writing. Let's How talk about that. That's a good way to start. Okay. So everybody knows I'm originally from Brooklyn. Brooklyn. BK. So cool. <laughs> we moved from Brooklyn to New um, to Connecticut when I was a teenager. Um, we started going to a church in Bridgeport, Connecticut called um, Turner's Faith Temple at the time. The pastor is Bishop J.C. White, Woo! The, who, would, who would eventually become my father-in-law. Look um, at that. There was a teen choir in the church that um, I saw this girl I wanted to get with, so I joined the choir. <laughs> Brooklyn, uh, <laughs> Brooklyn, <laughs> Brooklyn. <laughs> That's what everybody don't know about Brooklyn. So, but in Brooklyn, if you want to get with a girl, you go to the church. You go to the church bar. You don't go to the club and all that. We get our girls from the choir. So, <laughs> that's a, that's a that's a little known secret about that's Brooklyn. A, listen, listen. Everybody on here that know they know they what know. they say. If you know, you know. You if you know, you know. So, um. I wanted to get with this girl in the choir. Her name was Trina. So I joined the choir to get with her. We started going together. Um, and then during that time, um, there was a, a, guy, a young man who was writing who was an awesome writer, awesome, mm. Sean Brown. Sean Brown. Awesome writer. He really pushed me and got me started writing. So when I was like uh, maybe 19, um, with you for praise, we, we we were still the teens of TFT at the time. That choir that I joined was wow. the TFT that eventually became you for praise. Right. So he gave uh, history, y'all. Yeah. So he he said, you know, one day Sean was like, yo, um, I'm not teaching tonight. You need to write a song and teach it in rehearsal. Now he had never heard me write a song. He he had asked Whoa. me before. And I said, Yeah, I tried to write, but you know, nothing fruitful had come from it. He came, I'm t I'll never forget, one day on his way to the church, he said, I'm not teaching tonight, you teaching. Go, you're going to teach a song. I had Oh, my God. So, like, maybe an hour and a half, I wrote this song called Garment of Praise. So that was my first song I ever wrote. Um, this was years before we recorded. So I taught it in rehearsal that, that night. That was the first song I taught. And, and ever since then... Um, here we are uh, writing and singing. We, we eventually recorded that song and 
um, we recorded that um, record a couple of years later, and we uh -huh. recorded like Awesome God. Yeah. Up and deliver. Um, Delivered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so we wrote those, you know, we wrote some of those songs. Sean would write half the record, I would write the other half, and, you know, God blessed us from there. So let me ask you this. Okay, as intimidating as that might have felt, right? Yeah. Um, Because he didn't just say, I'm not, I'm not going to direct or I'm not going to uh, uh, facilitate the rehearsal. He said, I want you to take over the rehearsal and teach a song you wrote. Not even bring nothing from nobody else. Right. Like that right there had to be crazy. It was crazy because, again, this is another, I, I, not to give all praise to Brooklyn, but just being honest. Mm -hmm. A lot of New York churches, mm -hmm. they wrote their own songs. So my father-in-law, Bishop J. true. he was from Institutional Radio Choir. Say and, less. They didn't sing anybody else's songs. That's I mean, it. When it was time to sing, they Butch would just go write something real quick and teach, and they would sing it that, that Sunday. And it would hit. And it was crazy. It uh, would hit. So it wasn't, it, as much as I make it sound like it was something strange, mm -hmm. it wasn't strange for our culture because right. that's kind of where my father-in-law came from. That's kind of what we were used to. Like, yeah. oh, awesome God, years before we recorded it. Um, so these were songs, our, our Sunday morning songs. I mean, of course we did, you know, Bishop Has Guy Walker, we did John P. Key. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But for the most part, we would strive and, and push to write and release our own songs. So um, when he asked me to come and teach, it was like, you you taking too long. It wasn't even like, let's wow. try to do. It's like, you know, you should have been doing this. That was the right. kind of, that right. was the thought and the feeling behind what he said. So yeah. it for me, it was like a push to do what I was called to do. It yeah. was, and it was a pull, like, okay, stop, st come out of hiding. Stop, stop being afraid. God and put his foot in your back and was yeah. like, <laughs> yes, he did. we was just talking about that. Like when God say go, yeah. don't try to figure it out. Don't right. overthink it. Just yeah. move. And I just didn't have time to overthink it, right? No was, time. I didn't have time to be afraid. I didn't have time to be fearful. It was like, he left. That's the best way. Yes. Yeah, so That's the was, best way. You got to do it. That's where I, that's where I was at. So yeah. fortunately, God met me at my place of need and my place and my desire to do what He called me to do. So He helped me um, orchestrate mm. the song. And here's the thing: I want to encourage writers with. You know, when I first wrote it and I taught it, I came back and made modifications the next week. It's okay. not first presented. It has to be the complete work. Right. It, um, just like he reveals something to you, he can reveal changes as well. So ah. he, he gave me some changes to make before we recorded it. And, you know, now it became one of our first release songs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so let me ask you this now in church, I think people think like this. I have to be honest and say, I thought like this up until a certain point and then it changed. It shifted for me. When did you go from writing songs for in the four walls, or when did you transition from writing songs for songs to be sung in the four walls for songs to be sung all over the world? Or did you know when that happened? You know what? I'm gonna be perfectly honest. I, and this is a story, um, I'm very transparent about my life. That's what we want. So around, in between, Trina and I got married when I was 20 years old. She was 18 going on 19, right? Y'all were babies. We were babies. No yeah. counseling. This is the truth. We went and to adjust to the peace. We didn't tell nobody. We didn't tell wow. her. We just went and got married, right? Because we wanted to be married. We were young couple. <laughs> hey, look, when you find her, you find her, right? Yeah, trying to be saved in the church. Yeah. And, you know, and we bless him. We're trying to be saved in the church at a young age. So we went and got married. And we didn't realize that marriage was more than um, just the opportunity to do what married people do. But it was a covenant relationship that we were. Uh. And we had no training on how to steward that covenant, right? right. So we just went and got married, no, no, um, no counseling or anything. So we wound up getting separated like a year and a half into getting married. Wow, Jay. I mean, and this is real talk. So often... Yeah. We'll be living in the house, not living in the house together. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years later, we had um, we we um, birthed my son, um, mm -hmm. J Four, who is like you know you know how God said from heaven, "This is my son, who I'm well pleased." That's we 
we we see how much you love that that boy, that young man. I'm sorry, he he's not, I can't say that little boy, that, that grown man. <laughs> and now he, he married man, like married man, you know, graduate, doing yeah. well in craft, but he's still my little boy, right? Yeah, yeah. So um we had him and then around two thousand and four. Okay. Four, um, something shifted. I'll never forget. I was at a I'm going to come back around to it, but I was at a conference, mm -hmm. and Cheryl Brady was preaching. I'll never forget. And we were, se we were separated at the time. And she was preaching, and she talked about the story of Noah. And she was talking about how Noah was in this ark, and as much as, we, as, much as that place was supposed to be a place of safety for him, it was rocking all the time. And it wow. Was, and he was in the middle of an ocean. And imagine how, how the waves going up and down. I mean, this... This storm was strong enough to kill all of civilization except for him and, and his family and everybody in the boat. So it had to be crazy on it, right? Had but, to be. But then there's a scripture that says, after, um, like, wait and after the storm, God said, and God remember Noah. That's all she said, and God remember Noah. And I will never forget when she said it, um, God, Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, I have not forgotten you. Wow. <laughs> Conference. And here's the thing, though. I was still operating in my gift. I was still operating, doing different stuff. But it was, like, in my own strength. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you know, feel like you're doing stuff. Based There's on a difference. Yeah. There's a difference. Yeah, you're doing it based on your ability, what you're able to do, what you've learned how to do, your gift, your craft. It's all on you, right? So I was still operating, but that's why I wound up being at that conference. When she said... God has not forgotten about you. And God said, go get your family back. As clear as day. He didn't tell me about no music. He didn't tell me about um, how to become popular, how he was going to make me rich. He, he, and none of that. See, I think people think that when God speaks to you, he's going to tell you the stuff you want to hear. But he right, he, right, what right. he wanted from me. Right. Like, go get your family back. And he said, you're ignoring your favor. Because the Bible says, a man that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtain its favor, favor. With, the Lord. with the Lord. So I, I promise you not. This was like in 2004. I went and told, um, I told Trina, I was like, this is what God says. So we got to, Jesus, we got to work this out. This is 2004. I told my son, now here's the thing. We separated and I'm lit. He, he's with me on weekends, right? So um, we, on weekends, he, we would go to the movies and we'll be playing, um, PlayStation One, because that's what we, we <laughs> <laughs> PlayStation One, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We're a little older than y'all, so you know, just be patient. We had to say <laughs> to it, you know. <laughs> so you know, we'll be playing games. I'm thinking he's having the life of Riley, right? I told him, I said, me and your mother are gonna work it out. We're gonna be back in the same roof. The same young man that was getting all the games and movies and pizza he wanted laid his head on my chest and started crying. Man, look, don't break us down, JJ. Come laid on, man. Started crying because, and I didn't realize until that point how what we were experiencing, because we, sometimes when families are separated and husband and wife are separated, <coughs> they're thinking about themselves. Right. About how the situation is facing them. They're mm -hmm. not really paying attention to how it's affecting their children. Yeah. It was in that moment, I realized that this was really hurting him. So I, if nothing else, for my son and for my favor, I was going to get my family back together. For my son and for my favor. Yep. Oh, my Jesus. Yes, Lord. So <laughs> Come on. So we got we got back together. And, you know, and it wasn't, I want everybody to know, it wasn't an easy process. We had to, we had to relearn trust. Yeah. We had to break down some of our walls and yeah. had to uh, forgive in ways we wouldn't have had to if we stayed separated. So God brought us back together. At that point, when I started writing again, it became a diff. I, what I heard was different. It wasn't like what felt good in church. I know it. I know it was different. Yeah, <laughs> it it became less about. I want y'all to hear how we sound. Than wow. Me saying, God, I want to lift the sound to you because I'm so grateful. Yeah. I'm so grateful for you restoring me. I'm so grateful that you restored my family. Can I sing something that pleases you? Right? Woo! Sing something that says power of the pen. Jesus. 
So that that's where my song went. It went from a song of impression and, and being impressive to being a song that shows how grateful I am. How grateful I am. So we, in that um, 2005, we recorded, the beginning of 2005, we recorded a record. Um, Jesus. Yeah, You Are So Awesome. Uh, song, the first song I wrote for that record was a song called You Are So Awesome. Now, you know, mm -hmm. we were like, yeah, but this yeah. Time, like, Lord, I'm amazed at everything you've done. Yeah. That's where yeah. I was. And then I, there was a young man in Bridgeport, Connecticut. I was like, his name is Dion Kippen. My Dion, bro. One of the Dion. Most amazing writers in the world. He is. I expressed to him, I was like, dude, um, You For Praise is going to release a record this year, but it's going to be different. So I need a song that's different. He, and so he started, he had a song called Praise Him In Advance. And I was like, I want that song because I, this is, that's fitting where I'm going. Uh -huh. He said, yeah, I already promised that to Marvin Sapp. What can we do? Yeah. So I, he said, let's write something else. I said, let's try. So he called me, he called me over to the crib. He had a studio in his crib. Let's he, go. He said, I started writing this song that says, I've had some problems. Come on. Come on. That's Come on, Dion. It was an incre incredible God deserves an incredible praise. Yeah. From me wanting something that I could not have because God was gonna give me something that I didn't know I needed. So he exceeds our thoughts. He exceeds our thoughts. I wanted praise him in advance, but God wanted incredible God, incredible praise. So he used that whole interaction and he used um, my whole issue that we were having with my family to prove that he's a God that restores, he's a God that heals, and he's a God that knows better than we do. Because His our ways are not his ways, our thoughts are not his wow. thoughts. Well, we, wow knows so much more than we do. He's wow. so much more than we do. So all I said all that to say. Yeah, I'm glad you said it. Yeah, that's when my song changed, when my, my life changed. I think so many writers are trying wow. to from a place of what's popular, of what does the world want to hear, of what will cross over. But if you write a song that's from a, tr a true and honest place, yeah. God will use what comes from your heart. Yeah, yeah, JJ, man, that <coughs> testimony is, oh my God, that testimony is, is more, is beyond amazing. You, you went through something that you probably didn't, wouldn't have chosen for yourself, right? Yeah. yeah. But it's almost like it was designed for you to go through it. Yeah. Because absolutely. you went through it, then you obeyed, yeah. you know, you heard a word and you obeyed the word. Yeah. Not realizing what that word was going to do for your future and for your family and and just looking at how blessed you guys are, right? Praise God. It's it's just amazing to see the manifestation of God's word. Absolutely. You know, and and I love it. I love it when God when God's promises are unfolded in front of man so people can see, they can see how it all unfolds because you'd be surprised at the people that even after COVID still doubt God. Absolutely. You, they, they, like still after COVID, after some of us that have survived and that are still here and still remain that still doubt God, but you are a true testament that his word is real. It's it's a promise that he keeps, <laughs> and 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 why not obey? Why not trust him? Right. I mean, the thing is, if God is so much more than what happens in the church building. Yeah, this is what I wanted to get to. Go. And and, and what ha what is, what this last season has shown us is that God doesn't need a building to be God. He don't need a building. He doesn't. And a build and and. and not that not not to negate the building, but, but it's he's not just moving in the building. That's right. And and for so long we praise the building instead of praising God. Like this is how we do church. This like it became so much about what we do that God had to challenge us to say, What would you do for me if you can't do that for yourself? Because if if you can't if you don't have an organ, will yeah. you worship me? What would you do? If you what would you do? If you don't have a drum set, can you still dance? If you don't have strings playing in the background, will you still lift your voice? And I think for so long, we've made our worship experience based on what the instruments are doing, what's happening in the house, what yeah. we 
others do? Because yeah. how many times have you seen somebody else dance, dance and made you want to dance? Now, there's nothing wrong with that because the Bible says to rejoice with them that rejoice. However, will you rejoice if you don't see anybody else rejoicing? Will you do it alone? Will, will you do you it in silence? Will you do it in silence? And you do everything else at home. Can you praise me at home? Yeah. Will you make my house, will you make your house my sanctuary? I know you can come to my house and make it your sanctuary, but can you do it in your house? And if you can dedicate your house <laughs> to what I want you to do, then I'll bless your house the same way I bless my sanctuary. JJ, you right now, you've gone from an artist, songwriter, producer, all these things on that level and on those stages. Now you and your wife are pastors, right? You both are pastors now of an amazing church in DC. And you, what I want to ask you is this, is there any difference in God inspired songs to God inspired sermons? Or is it kind of similar? It's similar in the fact that, um, let me be real clear about this. It, it's similar in the fact that the Holy Spirit is the one who gives direction. Yeah. It's similar in the fact that the Holy Spirit is the one that gives inspiration. Mm -hmm. However, you can write a song without a scripture. You mm -hmm. cannot have a sermon without a scripture. Don't you preach, preach, don't preach, preach your emotion. Preach, the preach, preach, preach. Hour of how you feel. Now, you can write a song based on your testimony, but when you teach, you better have a scripture with your testimony. Otherwise, <laughs> giving me your emotion. And I'm, Come on. I'm good. I'm, I'm totally comfortable with the fact that we testify through our, our various uh, means of um, expression. So we do it through song, we do it, yeah. through, we do it through musicianship, yeah. we're testifying. However, you cannot testify every week for an hour with no scriptural context. I'm sorry. So that's why there's a difference between preaching and singing. And let me be totally honest and transparent. I yeah. want people to know that this is not a graduation from music. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait. You got to say that again, because yeah. I don't think the people understood what you just said. Yes. Oh my God. Pastoring is not a graduation from music ministry. This is not no Jesus. Lesson. It's not, okay, first I'm going to sing in the choir, then I'm going to direct the choir. Jesus. I'm going to be a pastor. No, this is a calling all in itself. Now, God will use your previous experience to prepare you for where you're going, but just because you're a choir director, don't mean you're eventually going to become a pastor. You Preach. have to all to this. <laughs> can't just choose this. As a matter of fact, I've said no to this so many times. I didn't want it because it's a different level of responsibility that I haven't had before. But at the end of the day, just because I was a director doesn't mean I was going to eventually become a pastor. Dion, I see you, Dion. Dion, what's up, bro? He said help the people. We was just talking about you, D. Yes, sir. That's my brother there. Yo, that, okay, you don't understand. Well, you don't, you do understand. That was needed to be said. Yeah. That was needed to be said because that is a misconception. That's right. Among a lot of people in music, in gospel music. Right. Um, yes, I'll just leave it at that, but well, I'm so add, glad let, I... Let me, add, let me add to that. So for a while, let's be totally upfront. Look, I mean, this is power to the fans. Let's put it out. Well, he is a preacher, so <laughs> come on. So let's, let's put it out there. For a while... It was like, okay, you're going to become an artist, and then you're going to either do reality TV, or you're going to be an artist, and then you're going to do radio, or you're going to be an artist. There was always this, okay, so how are you going to expand your platform? This, um, this um, assignment of pastoring is not a way to expand my platform. I don't want anybody to walk into this saying, okay, well, if I can't do this, then I can go do this. Because... This is not your fallback. The teaching and leading people's lives is not your opportunity to make your name famous. Your, your responsibility is to, sh to shepherd them in a way where they move forward, they become who they're supposed to be while you stay, un while you stay close to the cross. Do yeah. not 
use this as an opportunity to expand your platform because that's not what this is supposed to be. I've heard Bishop Walker say so many times that, you know, he's been misconceived where people have, they have put labels and put expectations on him because they think that most of what he does is stuff that he would have chosen for himself. Yes. And, he, and, and he's like, if I had to choose <laughs> most of this stuff, I wouldn't have chosen for me. You Absolutely. know what else I would love to be doing? You know, you know what else I would love to be doing and where else I would love to be? You know, but, and, and people just think that, I'll, I'll even, I'll, I'll, I'll minimize this to baby food. Yeah. Worship leaders, right? Worship leaders, I have people come up and there's some people that worship with me that's on here and they know what I'm talking about that say, I can sing. I want to be on the worship team. What do I need to do? And it's like, uh, okay, we have to sit down and have a conversation because you being able to sing is not just enough. That's right. You know, you, do you understand what you're signing up for? Like, do you understand what you're asking to do? You're asking to stand on the front line of war. Yes. You're, you're saying, I'm signing up to stand on the front line of war, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they don't see that, right? And then let's, let's take it a step further. Then you have people that are on the team that's like, yo, I want to I wanna be able to lead a song or I want to I wanna be able to do the song and I got a song that I think would be great for the team. But then when they get up there, they get caught up singing so they forget to lead the people. They that's forget right. to they fig, they forget to bring the team and bring the band with them. You know, it's like that's baby food. Yeah. But it's such a it's such um an assignment. Absolutely. It's so, such an assignment. Me, oh me, my god. I'm about I'm got, I'm about to make somebody mad. The usually you said something that really stuck out to me. The people who ask for leadership are the people that don't need it. I'm getting ready to log off. <laughs> I'm getting ready to turn this off. <laughs> because that means you you don't want to be a leader. You want to be seen as a leader. If you look at everybody in the Bible who was chosen for leadership, they were sought after. They didn't seek for it. You look at David. You look at Moses. You look at Paul. Each of them, God either arrested them where they were or he sent a prophet to find them or they were chosen from birth. They didn't have to say, I, no, you're not running for this. You don't run for this assignment. There's no- the, Most this, people are running away from it. You run away from it. <laughs> We're running you away run from for it. it. You run away from it because you realize the responsibility of it. But for the people who are asking for it, they're not thinking about the responsibility. They want the shine. They want the limelight. They want to be seen. And I'm telling you, those are people who don't last long because at the end of the day, while you are waiting, while God is choosing you, he's preparing you. David was anointed years before he started as a, as became king. Many of you are being prepared now for what God already chose you for, but you don't, you, you don't, you're not going to run for it. You're not going to ask for it. There's going to be something that happens in your life that pushes you to where God wants you to be. But it's not going to be because you ask for it. It's going to be because God places you at the right time and you'll be assigned for the right season. I can't. I just. Uh, I just. I just can't. I don't even. I don't even know. I don't even know what to say. But thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being a messenger on tonight. Praise God, bro. I, 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 I've seen it. So many worship leaders, especially. And you said something so key. Let's bring it back to worship. Your assignment is not to show your gift. Mm. I'm invisible. If if at, this is something I've always measured as my barometer for how effective I was. If, at, if after I finish, the people are saying my name, I, did, I was wrong. Wow. After I step off the stage, if they're calling JJ's name, then I messed up because I made it about me. Jesus. At the end of my set, at the end of my assignment, at the end of my, me singing, they should be saying Jesus' name. They should be worshiping him. As a matter of fact, I shouldn't have to be saying anything and the worship should still carry because my effectiveness is not based on how much attention I got, but it's based on how much attention I got to him, how much I got people to focus on him, how much I got people to say his name. If I do that, if people are worshiping him after I finish, then I was effective. But you can't do that when you're concentrating on how you sound and 
and what you did and making sure the song you chose was the one that worked more, most with your voice. It should not even be about you. It should be about giving him glory and making sure that people be. give him glory. It has to be. It has to be. JJ, let me stop right here real quick because I don't want to get lost. I, I have to do this because I do this on every show. Yeah. Um, it's, it's from my heart. It's from our hearts. Everybody, they're already doing it. Y'all, please give my brother some hearts. JJ, I want you to know that I love you. Love um, you. We love you. We, we thank God for you. Um, I want you to get your flowers now while yeah. you are here with us and you're on earth. I want to tell you to your face that I thank God for the ministry that God has placed inside of you. Let me tell you what I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for the sermon that Cheryl Brady. Yeah. Cheryl I'm Brady. grateful for the sermon that Cheryl Brady preached because she don't even know because of her because of her obedience and preaching that word to that audience that you were sitting in. Yeah. <laughs> that you are who you are now and we've been blessed to receive what you've been giving us, what God has been giving to you to give to us. So all of that, like, man, I'm, I'm so grateful for your life, man. And I can't wait to see what's next. I can't wait to see what next because I know he's not through with you. Exactly. I know he's not through with you. Um, I want to say this. I want to ask you this, rather. So I watched the McDonald's Gospel Celebration um, on YouTube the other yeah. day. And they did the region of DMV. Yeah. And they closed out with this brother that <laughs> he looked a lot like you <laughs> yo y'all killed right praise god this is a song i don't think that you wrote this you can correct me if i'm wrong but you ended the you en they ended the program with this song yeah you're and it live. says you're gonna live yeah um i want to know well first did you write that past so pastor antoine johnson i'll tell you the story after you okay Pastor Antoine, um, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. But now let me get to this. The reason why I'm talking about this song is because I want to know why you chose to record that song. Why was that song important to go out to the people now? Power of the Pen. T talk to us about You're Gonna Live. So You're Gonna Live, believe it or not, was not a, was not a song. Mm -hmm. It was Pastor Antoine Johnson is a preacher. We're going to talk about that, too. Keep yeah. going. He's a preacher just that, you know, every time he would preach, he would end with a chant that supported his song. So You're Going to Live was a chant, but what I heard Pastor David Wilford sing it um, at a service. Um, as a matter of fact, it was on YouTube. And I was like, I got to record that because I believe every season has a song. Huh. Every season has a declaration. Yeah. And when we recorded the Not Holding Back record, which has you, You're Gonna Live on it. Which is amazing. Praise God, bro. It was in the middle of the pandemic. We recorded that whole record through the pandemic. Um, so all of 2020, we were recording it two or three songs at a time. And Jeez. we recorded that song because that was when we hit, we recorded that song when we hit 400,000 people who died of COVID. And there was a fear that hit the land. I mean, you weren't, there was people who weren't sure how it was happening. We didn't know how COVID was being transmitted. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was so many different fear um, elements that were entering the land that people were afraid to go outside at all. I remember going outside and, and, and you know, in the D.C. area, it's pretty busy. I mean, traffic is crazy. Especially D.C. Exactly. It was a ghost town. It was a ghost town. You went out and literally there were no cars on the road. In so many cities. In so it, many cities that you were least expected. Exactly. People were afraid. Yeah. And it was a, there was there needed to be a declaration through the season that in spite of what um is being said on the news, yeah, what your fear says, yeah. Live to see every promise God made. And you're I, gonna live. And I believe, and I know this may be crazy, but I believe you cannot die until you see every God, every promise God made. Wow. Your promise is keeping you alive. Wow. I, wow. What you are waiting for, as long as it's not done yet, that means- Hashtag power of the pen, y'all. Hashtag power of the pen. Keep yeah. going. As long as you're alive, that means God is not finished. So that that said to me, I need people to know and I need people to declare that you're going to live because, and, and not just you're going to live just so you can have fun, not you're going to live just so you can be with your family. You're going to live 
to see it happen. What is that? See it happen. Your promise, your future, your destiny, what God, your, your purpose, you're going to live to see it come to pass. I needed, to, I needed people to be able to sing that to, to themselves, sing it over their house, sing it over their family. I was getting reports of people playing it in hospital rooms of people who had COVID that you're going to live to see it happen. I even have people who survived um, strokes and heart attacks sending me that song saying, God ministered to me. One, one guy, i never forget, he um, came out of the hospital and they were playing You're Gonna Live while he was walking out on a cane. But oh, he my God. Didn't live to see what, hey, he still, oh, my God. What God promised. So that's why I released that song. Sorry, let me not get excited. No, so no, God. no, no, no. That's what it's the, listen, power of the pen, brother. Let me tell you something. The, okay, for all of you songwriters, I'm, I'm, oh, my God, this, this story about this song is just blowing my mind. For all of you songwriters, for all of you creators and creators out there um, who think that what you create has to be a finished piece. Yeah. He, he started off by saying that he his first song that he wrote and that he taught to the choir, he did it based on instruction, but it wasn't finished. Yeah. Through a course of time, it got better, right? right? Absolutely. Um, the fact that people think that they have to have a full song it has to be a complete song, an a, 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 a a part, a B part, a chorus, and a vamp, and all that stuff, or whatever. That that might not be what God wants to go out into the earth. That's right. This song we're talking about right now, you're going to live. Is not even what you would call a song. It's a chant. It's, it's a, a declaration. Ch yes, sir. It's a declaration. And listen to what listen to what the motivation behind the song was. The song was the the motivation behind the song wasn't. Um, I want to get this song placed on my album. I want to get this song on the charts. I want to get this song out there so people can say they can just sing the song. No, he wanted to put something in the mouths of people that were living in doubt, That's that right. were living in fear, that were living in, in, in depression and, and uncertainty. He wanted to give them something to say out of their mouths because we all know. Yeah. We all know that if we speak a thing. Yes, sir. If we say it out of our mouths, it's done. It's, it's a finished work now. Once you declare it. Once you declare it. It is so. It is so. So now, so now you have people around the world saying, you're going to live. You're yeah. going to live. And, and, and here's, here's the catch. Here's the, here's the catch 22 part about the song is that you want people to declare it over themselves, right? Mm -hmm. But they're actually saying you're going to yeah. live. So while they're speaking over themselves, they're speaking it to anything and everything that's around them. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, that sir. means everybody gets blessed if they're in the if they're in the vicinity of the song. <laughs> yes, sir. It's declaring over you. You're sir. declaring it. It's declaring over your neighbor. I, I you know what? I, I, so funny. I think it was um, Lady Dee Dee Freeman. This is good. She said, "I'm not gonna lose an ink pen. I'm not losing nothing. God promised me." I will not surrender, not one promise. I'm going to live to see everything he said I'm going to get. And, and I just believe that um, words have power. And so many times we, we use our words to articulate fear. We, we use our words to articulate anxiety. But in this song, you're using your words to articulate the promise of God, that you will live to see everything he said. You will live to see everything he promised. Jesus. Uh, um, JJ, this is, this is so amazing, bro. Praise God, bro. I, I just want to say, I just want to say thank you so much for accepting the invitation and coming on here and, um, and sharing this platform with my audience and, and, and just, and just sharing your testimony, man, because every, people just need to hear it, man. They need to hear it. And now you all know, now you all know what is behind this person, this 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 person that is ministering the music to you and that sing these songs that you sing in your house and in your kitchen and in your car and have playing on your job. Now you know what's behind it. It's not this is no show. This is no self gratification. This is this is for this is obedience to God and for God's people. Yeah. And for God's people. Um Man, uh, I, I'm 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 completely blown away. I'm normally never lost for words, but Great. this is just so good. I have a curveball. I have a curveball. I want to ask you a question, 
and I just want to get your take on it. And this is if you even know anything about it, right? Um, do you know the name Jelani Day? I've heard, is that the young man where they found him with no organs? Yeah. 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 Heard about that. Yeah. What do you think, what do you think about, because you have a son. Yeah. Um, I have two sons. Mm -hmm. um, we have other men in our family, black men in our family, right? Yeah. Um, what do you think, what would you, <laughs> man, what do you think about what the black man is going through right now? It's nothing new. Yeah. But where, where we are right now as a people, as, as a brotherhood, like, what, what, do you, what, what are your thoughts about that? Man, you know, I've had to think and pray about that, again, because in this position, mm -hmm. on the assignment that I'm in, you need to be able to speak to not only what's happening in the sanctuary. Yeah. Be able to speak to people in, the, in a real place of fear. Right. And this fear is not, a, is not, um, not unwarranted. It, mm -hmm. this, let, me say, let, me, let me say concern. Let me not say mm -hmm. fear. But it's a concern that's not, war that's not unwarranted. Right. Um, it, it's, it's scary. It's sad that what should bring us um, a sense of comfort now brings us a sense of fear. When uh -huh. you see a police car, um, for certain people, it presents safety. For yeah. us, it presents fear. Right. Because... Um, you could you are just as much in danger based on what the feeling is of the person in that car. Yeah, uh, and that's not to say that this young man was killed by a police officer, but right. the, the concern is we don't have a place where we can feel safe mm -hmm. other than in the presence of God, because um, you don't feel safe going to the um, to the police house. You don't feel safe going to the courthouse, and there right. are. You can be, feel unsafe even in your house. Right. My answer to that is this. The righteous run to him. Yeah. And they are saved. Right. That's the only thing we, that's the only place we know we have safety. Yeah. yeah. We can't feel safe, absolutely safe in any other place, but in the presence of God. So I invite you even now in a time when you feel uneasy. Yeah. Yeah. Time when you feel unsafe in other places. This yeah. is more than ever. This is the time to find your refuge in the presence of God and in the refuge in God. Yeah. yeah, that's the only thing we can have to feel safe in. Um, of course, we have to use wisdom, uh -huh. and and we also know that God is the God of all comforts. So I'm praying for comfort even for um, Jelani Day's family, yeah. and even in the time where there may be confusion and unrest and even um, questions because they haven't gotten an answer for what happened. Right. God brings comfort and peace to them and brings refuge and safety to us in his arms. Amen. Amen. I watched the interview um, of his mom and they were asking her certain questions. And in one of her responses, she said, my son wouldn't have thought that way because my son was a believer. My son, we believed in God. We attended church and we were Chris we are Christians. Wow. And said, you know, she pretty much said that um the the what they was talking about was suicide, uh, the possibility of suicide. And she just said, you know, we're not giving our lives over we're not giving our lives or giving ourselves over to suicide because the Bible says that you can go to hell for that. Okay. So the the comfort for me was knowing that I know that he knew who God was. Right. No matter what happened, no matter how he left, if we all could just pick how we leave, you right. know, that would be great. But we can't. We can't pick how we leave, right? Yeah. But the comfort. But you know, it's so funny. I, the 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 uneasiness about that is we know that for a season there were a few people they were saying committed suicide. I mean, they were finding people in trees and saying, you know, first of all, what what black man you know was going to. Uh, a mall or something like that and hanging himself in a tree. It's just not happening. But what that does is it gives them, it, it, it frees them from responsibility. Yeah. It frees um, them from the responsibility of finding the truth because right. they, they themselves are afraid of what that truth will do. Right. The, 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 um, the unrest that may be caused by the, the discovery of that truth. But uh -huh. at the end of the day, we do know that this young man 
Um, like you just said, his family was uh, b were believers. Right. And praise God for that. Our prayer God for it. that he left on, in the safety of, of Jesus Christ and that he yeah. was a blood washed believer. And we know that he will um, be, he will find eternity, eternal rest with Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. But even us that are, even we that are here, yeah. uh, we need to be able to, of course, bond together. And we need not only find refuge and safety in the arms of Christ, but also find peace with our brother. Because mm. that peace, that we need each other more now than we ever did before. More now than we ever did before. Yeah. Uh, Pastor JJ. <laughs> <laughs> Man, thank you. Thank you, Trina, for feeding him before this interview. Because that <laughs> fool, <laughs> that fool did us all good. Praise God, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man. Is there anything that you want to leave um, that you may not have said with any creatives, with any yeah. um, songwriters, artists, producers, um, anybody that may be just a little uneasy or uncertain right now in their gift, you know, like with what to do and, and how to make the next move? Is there any, any sort of uh, motivation or any encouragement you would like to give to anybody tonight? Let me encourage you with this and say we all still trying to figure it out. Um, I this is the honest to God. Nice. Um, the season has shifted. Yeah. Um, what worked two years ago doesn't yeah. work today. Um, the system that was in place two years ago is not in place today. So you have to be integral and honest about what you have and present it to the best of your ability. And, and don't be swayed or tempted to dilute what you do to fit a, a certain system because that right. system may not be in place a year from now. Right. Um, <laughs> right. We've been here for uh, quite a few years. Yeah. And several fads. And we've guys. seen it. We've seen the waves, right? We've seen the wave. And what we've I been part of the wave. Exactly. We've been part of the wave. Thank well, you, Jesus. What, but we've been I, part of the wave. You know what's so funny, though? What I can say is this. The ones who have transcended the waves yeah. are the ones who stayed integral to their sound. They stayed unique to who they were. Um, like you figure uh, Bishop Hezekiah Walker, John Key, Richard Smallwood, Kirk Franklin, They, even though they may evolve, mm -hmm. they still stay unique. Don't try to mimic something else because it seems like that something else is popular in the day. Be who you are, be who God called you to be, and in due time, you will reap if you faint not. I mean, the bi th this is the thing about all music, all giftings. They don't escape from um, biblical principle. So, you know, if the Bible says to do reap if you faint not, that applies to your music, that applies to your gifting, that applies to your secular life, whatever you do. That's if good. You if you don't quit, you will eventually see the fruits of your labor. Okay, 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 okay. I got ahead of myself. Before we go, there's yeah. something that I wanted to talk about tonight real quick. If you got a few more minutes. Yes, let's go. You did something, and I've been following you. People have been following you. You probably didn't really know it, but I've been following you and following your journey for quite some time now. Right. JJ, you've been blessed to start out, you know, in the choir, singing like mm -hmm. most of us or whatever, and you went into artistry. You went into being an artist, and um, and God blessed you to where you was able to walk away from your nine to five. Yeah. <laughs> so what I want you to talk about, I'm just going to set it up for you. <laughs> I'm going to set it up for you. Yeah. What I want you to talk about is being able to walk away from a job, but willing to work. Man. That's what I want you to talk about. So this is the real deal truth. I, I retired from a secular job I'll probably say eight years ago. So we've been singing in gospel music for over, wow, 25 years now. Wow. So with that being said, we were, I was still working while traveling. I mean, I, listen, I, we, start, <laughs> Come on. We, we were doing so well that, you know, we would be able to sing here and there doing the stellar. Yeah. Stuff like that but this is the thing what people won't tell you about this music talk As to us love it it doesn't pay the way you think it would unless you really make some smart business decisions right and when we first started out you know there were certain things we just didn't even know to do 
You know what I'm saying? Even in, even in our knowing, it wasn't paying enough that I would be able to support my family in the way they need to be supported mm -hmm. and not work a job. Mm -hmm. So get the Stella Awards, I would, you know, I would have my laptop go up to the, to the hotel room and, you know, run my reports, do my work, come back downstairs and, and go ahead and start singing. Come on, JJ. Because at, I, I love what I do. But at the time, it was a dream. At the time, it was a vision unfulfilled. It was a vision, and we were starting to see the fulfillment of it. But while it still was being fulfilled, I yeah. still support my family. I would not let my, I'm not going to tell my kids, you know, we can't get what we need this month. Because I'm going to sing. Yeah, we, we got this, we got this gate, this date coming up. When, when that date come through, I, there's no way I would put my family's life in the hands of promoters, in the hands of um, people no way. to come sing. There's, there's, how could I do that? How could no I put way. The future in the hands of what was unsure? So yeah. I have to be more in a more secure situation. I, this is the honest to God's truth. I retired from my job. I got a watch and a cake and everything. Because <laughs> this, this is what this is what people ain't gonna tell you. You have to be a good steward of everything you do, not just music. So as much as I was as much as I was ministering, as much as I was going and singing and I was excellent on the road, I was also excellent at my job. Come on, brother. I, I was accountable. Come on, brother. I was where I was supposed to be, and I did good work. Because of that, in the midst of my traveling, I was getting promotions and pay raises because I applied, applied the same principles of excellence to my job that I applied on the road. Yeah, so my, man. I retired willingly, and they were like, okay, we don't, we don't want you to go, but if you want to, we understand. Because they were, they were so... Um, intrigued by what was happening for us that they were at my job they were buying my cds <laughs> because, come on come on co-workers <laughs> they were loving what was happening because they were actually excited about the fact that i was able to apply myself on the road but still wow. also apply myself in the church the reason why oh this is good the reason why many corporations don't respect the church is because of the people who work at at the jobs come to come to work late. They come, <laughs> for, you know, making copies, printing printing their stuff for the church. At, you know what I'm saying? If you are going to be a representation of Christ, you don't represent Him at the church. You represent Him outside of the church. JJ, say it one more time. Say it one more time. If you are if represent. You if you're gonna represent Christ, you don't represent him in the church. You get gassed up in the church. You get refreshed in the church. You wow. represent him outside of the church. So that's what I did at my job. Hubble Wine Devices, they loved me. They sent me off with a cake, gave me a you know a, a leaving bonus and all that stuff like that. And and they and after I left, they dissolved my position. They didn't even give it to nobody else. They split up my work and that was it because they didn't want to even, you know put somebody else in my position. God blessed me in that place. And I'm. And here's the thing. I'm thankful for what it taught me. It taught me discipline. It taught me work, work ethic. And I applied that same corporate um, understanding of work ethic to the church. So that's how I was able to institute an environment as a minister of music of how to be in place, how to, um, how to be in accountable. And yeah. even ministers of music and um, the worship leaders that served under me, mm -hmm. I was able to teach them. And now, it, now um, one church I, I, I left, the church I um, left when, when I became pastor, one of the worship leaders that served under me is now the minister of music because she learned what I applied and yeah. I learned that discipline, not in the church, but in the corporate world. This is, this is so good. This is like a real good meal. This is... <laughs> This is like a real good meal. <laughs> Praise God. Man. Praise God, bro. JJ, thank you. I, I know. I know. I'm not even going to say, Lord, please. I already know. People are going to be so blessed by this information, by this, by these testimonies, by this. Oh, my God, man. You don't understand how much of a blessing you are to people. Praise God. Man. To other brothers like me, you know, like to, to black men 
Oh man, like this is this is such a blessing, man. That testimony when I heard about you doing that, I was like, yo, that's huge, you know. But now knowing that you did have the right mind when you did it, you did treat your job right. You was a good steward, yeah. you know. Like all of those things, people were just like, yeah, you know, I'm I'm about to I'm about to leave my job and go into business for myself. I'm I'm going to leave my job and I'm going to go on the road. Oh yeah, right, right. But you are. Can I say something about that though? <laughs> for the people who say they're going to leave their job to be an entrepreneur, I applaud you. Mm -hmm. I, I you know give you all the accolades, but you need to know this. Come on. <laughs> when you on a job, you come on hours. When you're an entrepreneur. You're working 16 and 17 because there's a different level of stewardship that's required when it's yours. Especially when you have no staff. It, it, when you have, it's there, there's you. no staff of people to do all of those individual things. Right. All of those things have to be done by you. Right. And this is the thing. You can leave a place working for, like, say, say you work in a t-shirt company. You go uh -huh. there. You work there, you eight hours. You think you can leave there and just go make t-shirts because you had the experience. You have the experience, but you don't have the ownership. You don't have the same level of stewardship when it's yours. So I found that out even in Western. <laughs> you know, I've, I've been working at churches for years, and I'm like, if, you, if, if, I, was, if I was doing this, I would do that, that, that. But now that I have to run it, and I, okay, now you have to make a decision between lights and speakers. There's a different level. <laughs> of stewardship required when it's yours to run. So I encourage everybody that says they want to leave and become an entrepreneur, make sure you are ready. It's not easy as you think it is. Now, I'm not discouraging you against it. I believe we as Black people should run businesses. Yeah. We should own land. We yeah. should own houses. I believe we should. But at the end of the day, make sure you are ready for what you're asking for. Right, right. Can y'all can y'all please give my brother hearts one more time? Praise God, man. Power of the pen. The reason why this is the, the power behind power of the pen in this segment is about these testimonies behind all the songs and the writing and everything else that we see in this man's life. Praise this God. is the power behind all of that. Everything that he has discussed with me on tonight, that's the power behind it all. Yeah. yeah. His yes, his obedience, his willingness, his sacrifice, his transparency. Like, all of that is the power behind the pen. Amen. Wow, man. You're, you're a blessing. You, you are a blessing. You're a blessing. You're a blessing. I, I thank God. Thank you so much for coming on here tonight, man. I'm so honored to have you on here. Again, we all cannot wait to see what's next in your life. Um, is there anything that's coming up that you want us to know about? Man, so, you know, as much as we are excited about what we're releasing musically, uh, we'll probably um, release something in first quarter of 2022 because my focus right now is on All Nations D.C. Pastor Trina, All Nations D.C. Man, we I, I love this assignment. Um, not to say that it's easy and not mm -hmm. to say it's stress-free, but um, I know it's where, where God has purposed us to be. Mm -hmm. And for me, and ST, you know, um, you know Trina, she's been quiet. She's always been in the background. To see her come alive in this assignment is amazing. Has been it's amazing. It's been more exciting to me. I mean, as much as I knew this is where God has placed me, watching her be, walk in her purpose has wow. been more exciting for me than anything I've ever done. And Watch, that's, watching your favor, watching my favor, <laughs> and I don't even know. This is why God, we know God orchestrates this stuff. I don't know. If I didn't hear Cheryl Brady teach that message, if Pastor Trina would be walking in where she is right now. Jesus! I don't know if my son uh, Jesus. would be where he is. I don't know that my daughter would be working at Howard University. I don't even know if all these things would have been happening. And this is why, um, I, I, as much as we get frustrated with where we are and what we're going through. You don't know if you didn't go through that, you would oh be. Oh my God. If you don't face this, oh my God. Get to where God is placing you. So even what you're facing now is a part of where God is taking you. That's why the Bible says all things work together. They we all work together. 
We think that that means, oh yeah, everything, everything I'm mad about. No, even the stuff you're dealing with now is a part of what God is doing and it's working together for your good according yeah. as your call according to his purpose. It, if it wasn't the reason why he mentioned purpose because that had to happen for you to walk in your purpose. So I'm so grateful for every, you talk about my testimony, all these things had to happen for me to be able to be here to sit here and talk to you about All Nations DC. So I'm truly grateful for this assignment. I'm grateful for everything we've gone through and I'm grateful for where we're going. And if anybody ever wants to see what's happening with All Nations DC, I encourage you to follow at All Nations DC on Instagram. Yo, my man. <laughs> Somebody said, JJ came to walk heavy tonight. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But if anybody that knows you, they know this is who JJ is. Amen. This, this is who you are. So I, I it, like I said, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to have you on here. Honor, bro, always. We gonna get ready to get out of here because I'll be trying not to hold people too long. I'm gonna have to have JJ back. Praise Pastor God. JJ got to come back. I might have you and Trina come back the next Let's time. Do it. Let's we do go it. like we. Oh my goodness, man! Thank you so much for coming. Say what's on your mind. Speak loud from within. Make us sing along with the power of the pen. Say what's on your mind, speak loud from within, make us sing along with the power of the pen, say what's on your mind.